Welcome to my second video about I2C on any PC. Today I will show you an even more easier way to access I2C interface on any PC or laptop than in my last video. So in my last video I have shown you how to access I2C if your PC has a free PCI Express port. Because PCI Express has two pins for the SM bus which is basically the same than I2C. And I've modified such an extender cable for PCI Express. I've removed the head here and soldered down this pin header. And over this pin header I could access or I could connect I2C sensors and devices and control them from within my PC. All I had to do was plug this in and I was ready to go. But today I will show you an even more easier way to access I2C on any PC or laptop. This time all you need is a free display connector. And here it doesn't mind if your display connector type is VGA, DFI, HDMI or DisplayPort. Because all of these display connectors comes with an I2C interface. Hey, <laughs> why would display connectors have I2C interfaces? Well, the reason is quite similar like the SM bus. So a lot of monitors have small storage devices inside of them and these storage devices contains data about the monitor like the supported resolutions for example. And the PC can get these informations over the I2C pins of the display connectors. Okay, so let's see where or how we can access these pins. So I found this really cool article, the world's cheapest I2C adapter from Pete Burgess. Yeah, and you can see here he built an adapter by using a DFI cable and I will do something similar today. But now first let's take a look at the pin out. So here we can see the pinout of VGA, DFI and HDMI and I will focus here on the VGA. You can see here pin 15 is serial clock and pin 12 is serial data of, the I2, of an I2C interface. Pin 9 is plus 5 volt and pin 5 is ground here. So we can get a power supply and an I2C interface from this VGA connector. And the cool thing is even the other display connector types like D4A, HDMI and I also believe DisplayPort which isn't shown here has the same four pins only the positioning in the connector is a little bit different. Okay, MP Burgers went ahead, cut off a DFOI cable and soldered um, a connector to it and voila! Here is the cheapest I2C adapter in the world. And I did something very similar, but instead of DFI I used an old VGA cable. I've cut um, one part off and soldered these four pins, two I2C pins and two power supply pins to this connector here. And now let's try if I can really access an I2C device. I will use a small I.O. expander for this by using this very cheap and simple adapter. So we'll pause the video for a second to do the hardware setup. Okay, I finished the hardware setup and I already told you this in my last I2C on any PC video, but if you want to connect hardware um, like this way to a PC, Please don't use your expensive gaming PC with your 1000 euros graphics cards. Please use some old and cheap hardware like I do here with this old Finn client here. So what you can see here, I this Finn client only has a combined DFI and VGA um, connector and I've used this adapter from D4A to VGA and then I connected my cable to it. And here you can see I have an, a module for an IO expander and I've connected the IO expander to the I2C pins and to a power supply so it's powered. Perfect. So now let me SSH into my system. So. And you can see here I'm running Alpine Linux on this because it only has a two gigabyte SSD built into it, which is quite small, but perfect for Alpine Linux. Maybe we'll do some videos about Alpine Linux and cross compiling for Alpine Linux later. If you're interested in, in it, please let me know in the comments. So the first thing we have to do now is we have to load the kernel module I2C dev to get access to the I2C um, to I2C um, over user space. So I will load this and now if I run I2C detect minus L, we can see I have various um, I2C um, 
buses on my system and I already checked this one here, I2C6, is the I2C bus my IO expander is connected to. Okay, so let's look for devices on this bus. Therefore, I will use I2C detect and I want to check bus number 6. Hey, and we can see here we have a device with address 20. So this device is indeed our um, I.O. expander here. Okay, so let's try to access it. So first I will use I2C set to toggle this LED here. So this I.O. expander has 16 GPIOs connected to it and we have to write 16 bit or two bytes to set them. So I want to access bus six device address 20 and I will write out a three and a, uh, yeah, a three and a zero here. Okay, and now we'll set the LED. Therefore, I will just write a two to it. So the first bit is not set because I've connected this LED to the um, power supply. And if I switch this pin to off, it will start lighting up. Okay, so now we can see the LED is on. Let's switch it off again and on again once more. Let's try to do a read. So I've connected this button to IO number one. So if I do an I square C get bus six address 20, I will read the value of the first four, um, eight IOs. And we can see here, um, currently it is set because um, there, um, yeah, because we have pulled this pin to high, but if we now press the button, it will be connected to ground and we should read in a zero here. Yes, that's the case. And if I release the button again, we'll get a two here. Okay, great. So that's how to um, access the I2C bus from a very cheap um, VGA to I2C adapter. And if you think of this this way, and remember Raspberry Pis are very expensive quite now, maybe you will use a thin client and such a display port to I2C adapter for your next project because you can connect any sensors and I/O expanders and other devices to it and do almost exactly the same thing like with, like with the Raspberry Pi. Of course, the only downside is it's, it's a little bit slower than on the Raspberry Pi because I2C, for example, is limited to one megahertz of transmission rate and normal GPIOs on, on Raspberry Pi you can toggle faster. But if speed is not so important, hey, this is a very cool and cheap way to control IOs from a standard PC or laptop. So I guess that's it from my side for today. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something. If you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee and buymeacoffee.com slash honest for Linux or send me a tip over PayPal. So that's it from me. Have a good day and goodbye.